What's up, guys? This is your boy Mad Max back at it with a great another what if. What if Deku was Alien X? Let's get it. So, we're gonna start our story off like this Deku. Alright, alright, I heard, I heard, I heard. Deku. He. I wanna say that, um. Mm, Deku was 10. And, no, he's not been 10, alright? Um, I'm gonna say when he was, like, 3 or 4. No, scratch that, scratch that. Basically, we, we, we can start this with a fight this. Basically, Deku, his father, was, I'm gonna say, hmm, full Alien X, basically. And since Inko lay with that nigga, so basically Inko... She fucked Alien X. A few years later, I'm gonna say that Deku was born, and basically Deku, he had you know the same you know thing as his father. But guess what? It basically goes up to his arms. I'm, I'm kidding, like um yeah, basically it goes up to his arms and his head. Basically, it's sort of like a like a symbiote or something like that. So basically, Deku, I'm going to say that um, when Deku was born, he had a full body alien X to where, to where that's when he couldn't control it. So basically, when Deku was born, th this is how he looked, basically, alien X shit. So Deku... I mean, Inko, she she was basically wondering, like, hey, where did my quirk get that, um, I mean, where did my son get that quirk? And basically, the doctor tells her that we do not know. So basically, they do some tests, and let's say that the doctor finds out that, um, his quirk is, is basically like a, it's sort of like a thousand years advanced into the future to where, to where his body is, you know, like this. And they deem it Alien X. And Deku... Um, I'm going to say they call it X. Because it's basically like a missing... I'm going to say that it's like the unknown quirk. It's basically out of all the books of quirks they have seen. This one is unknown to them. They don't know what it's going to do. They don't know how it's gonna work or or anything. So Deku. So Deku. Okay, let's say that Deku is three. Deku was, let's say, he was a little. I, I say he was little, basically. When he was three, he basically, you know, spoke. He said, "Hello, mother. I love you." Like, you know, anything that. All babies say. So Deku, like when he was three, he basically told his mom that I'm gonna be up. I'm the. I'm I'm gonna be going up to space. And basically, Inko said, "Uh, uh, no, no, no. You're my son. You're staying on Earth." And basically, she thinks, "Oh shit, he like he like he is able to survive space." And basically, and basically, she says, "Fine, just just don't get caught in the asteroid field." And basically, Deku says, all right, mother, I'm gone. Deku goes up there to space. And like, he, like, I want to say that he's sitting on Saturn, right? He's sitting on Saturn. And, like, I want to say that mm, some people walk, you know, and I got down. Who walks by? I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to say a Galvin, which is not, you know, Mm, I'm going to say the person who created I'm not saying it, it's like a Galvin. I'm going to say it's not, you know, the person, like the Galvin who created the Omnitrix, but like it's someone who, who like, who is older and wiser than that Galvin. Who, who, who explored the, the multiverse and different universes. Gathering DNA for a different rock watch. You'll see. So basically, I'm going to say that Galvin sees, you know, Deku in space, and he's going like, oh shit, who is this? So he goes up to Deku, and like, he was going to take some DNA, 
But Deku, he was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? take shit from me, my nigga. So Deku basically backhands, like, the um, Galvan, and then he sees, like, who it is. And then Deku, and then Deku in his 80-minute form, he about to off and drives to the Galvan ship, saying, sorry, I didn't, I, 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 you scared me. And basically, the Galvan's name is uh, 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 Ominous, or Amin. Or Omen. Basically, the Galvan introduces himself to Deku, saying, Hello, I'm Omen. I mean, Omen. It's a pleasure to meet you. And basically, let's say the Galvan, he was heading to Earth to gather, you know, some DNA from everybody, because, like, he built a machine to do that. So basically, o- Omen and Deku, you know, they um, talk a little bit. And let's say that, De- and let's say that, um, Omen gives Deku, like, a, I'm gonna say, something to, you know, turn him human for a little, like, you know, to control his alien X form. Because, like, when Deku was little, he basically, you know, had a little outburst. So, he created, you know, sun, stars, galaxies, multiverses. Basically, eh, the government didn't want that shit to happen. So basically, he gathered some. Di- um, um, I'm gonna say he gathered, like he made a machine, like a um, let's say it's sort of like the Omnitrix, but to where um, it can sustain Deku's you know power, and then basically it's gonna be I'm gonna say it it's gonna be on his um hand like you know Ben Ten or something right. Basically. Basically, whenever Deku wants to you know harness his alien X powers. Like, he basically can shout out X, um, I'm, I'm gonna say Alien X, Form 1, I mean Act 1. Basically, that's when, like, his hands get covered in Alien X. And, like, his, and, like, his core of his chest, it basically turns black. I mean, I'm gonna say, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, his chest doesn't turn black. It's just that when he says Act One, his arms turn black. You know, turn like you know, turn into galaxy or something. So basically, Deku says thank you, and basically, Omen gives Deku. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, Omen, you know, wants to, you know, wants Deku to be he like wants to study Deku. So Deku, he takes Omen. I mean. Um, Omen down to Earth, and he creates like a little small little world inside Earth. To where, to where it's like I'm gonna say it's sort of it, it's basically you know it's stronger than you know lava basically. To where Omen can repopulate down there, and like since you know it's Omen, eh, it's a Galvin. Basically, the Galvin. He basically contacts some other, you know, Galvins from the, like, from, like, from his home world. Basically saying, hey, we got another planet. You know, hop on down here. So basically all, like, half of the Galvin scientist goes to, um, Earth and lives in a small little planet. So let's say that one day, Deku is now 10, right? Deku's 10, and basically... The Galvans have been like the Galvans have been working on how to harness, you know, Deku's energies so that he doesn't, you know, explode and make a new galaxy and do and basically do that all over again, because uh, they don't want that. So basically, Deku, he's ten right now, and this is when like I'm gonna say Inko puts Deku in public school because like when he was like I'm gonna say up, up to seven or nine. Yeah, nine. Basically, Deku was homeschooled like for like hours, and basically Deku has been learning from Galvans. The motherfuckers are smart as fuck. Basically, they you know taught Deku in different you know types of writing languages, and basically Deku aced everything. And Deku is smarter than every human, even Nezu. And since, you know, Galvans are motherfucking OGs of science, Deku, he's been creating little, you know, things on the side. 
I'm gonna say that when Deku gets older, hold on. This is like this is gonna be his hero suit, and you'll see why. So basically, Deku back. Okay, back back to when he was ten. So Deku, he runs into like um like he's in public school and shit. He basically runs into um Bakugo, who basically thinks that he's fucking great, like he's greater than everybody. Because like you know, nah, this nigga, hell nah. So Deku, like let's say that Deku was you know walking in class and basically the teacher was going to introduce Deku to everybody. And Deku, he says, hello, my name is um, Isuku Midori. It's a pleasure to meet you. And guess what? Bakugo says, huh, probably got a weak quirk. And out of nowhere, Deku, he creates a small little, I'm going to say that he taps his watch. And like, the alien X goes up to his arms, like I said at first. It goes up to his arms and basically creates a black fire. To where, to where when Deku, you know, goes over there and say, say that again and this whole world is dead. And Bakugo was like, what the fuck is this? And like, he looks closer into Deku's hand. And he sees galaxies, asteroids, meteors, everything inside of his hand. And when Bakugo, you know, says, uh, sure, why not? And Deku, he walks back to the front saying, sorry about that, Teach. And the teacher says, it's fine, kid. Some, like, some kids need to um, stick up for themselves. And Deku, and, and Deku, like, let's say, it was recess. Deku, like, Deku was sitting there, and he was on, I'm going to say, that when he, like, I'm going to say that um he uses, you know, power to create, like, a little small... Um, I'm gonna say like a um computer that's like a multiversal computer. So basically, Deku he's sort of you know checking in on the Galvans a little bit, and he sees how far they advance to the point where they like to the point where they like I'm gonna say that the Galvans has like the Galvans have evolved to the point where their bodies it is immune to the lava. Their bodies are able to eat the lava, drink the lava, cook, hell, even make lava. And Deku's pretty much, you know, happy about that because, like, the Galvans are pretty weak. So basically, he sees what they're building, and it's like a suit. I, I, I say not a suit, but like a, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say they're collecting, you know, more, you know, more and more data, like from different multiverses, because. You know, when Deku, I'm going to say when Deku was eight, he basically made a dimensional portal to where, like, the Goblins are basically able to go to different dimensions, take things, you know, take different types of DNA there, ancient DNA. And, like, the Goblins are fucking happy about this. And they consider Deku the, the most, you know, dangerous. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just not say like, a god. But they basically say, um, um, Alien X. They have, like, pictures of, you know, a Alien X on their walls. I'm gonna say that, um, back to Deku. Basically, Deku created this, um, sort of, eh, computer-like thing that he carries around. Basically, when Bakugo goes over there, he's, like, he gets jealous that Deku has a computer saying, you can have a computer out here, nerd. And Dick says, what did the fuck, like, what the fuck did you just say to me? And the teacher sees, like, no fighting kids. And Dick, he, like, he touches the watch. And he says, act two. And it basically makes his hair turn black. It makes different galaxies come off his hair. It's a, it's a, um, spiky, you know, galaxy like hair is greenish black. And basically, Bakugo says, Villain! You have a villainous quirk. And Dick says, It's not villainous, it's godlike. 
And basically, Bakugo, he's scared. He's shitting his pants. Every kid out there, he's, they see Deku's hair. The teacher sees it. And he goes over saying, what is going on here? And Deku, he basically explains that these kids were bullying him. And basically, and basically, basically, Bakugo says, no, we weren't. And basically, the teacher has a, you know, great little, uh, I'm going to say a great little reputation with, you know, Bakugo. Because Bakugo, eh. He, and, like, the teacher believed Bakugo, saying, really? Are you sure about that kid? And basically, Deku, he's like, uh, and basically all the kids see this and like they say it was Bakugo it was Bakugo we, we saw it all happen and the teacher's like what he like they like, they say it, they say it was Bakugo and Bakugo looks I mean Bakugo Bakugo glares back at him saying you nurse you betrayed me and Deku and like the teacher you know doesn't believe them and so basically, they, so basically, the teacher calls the counselor, saying, "Um, a kid, like another kid, was bullying this kid." And so Deku, he gets called up to the counselor's office. His mom and like I want to say, his mom was called, and so was Mitsuki. Like they were called, and basically, Bakugo was in the office saying, "He, he hit me," and Deku says, "No, I didn't," and basically. The, and basically the counselor, I mean Deku and um Bakugo are basically arguing back and saying, He hit me. No, I didn't. Prove it. And like like Bakugo's, you know, pulls on his hand and like it's just a little, you know, sc um bruise or something like that. It can wash off. And like me see like a bruise? A bruise? Inko. I didn't, I mean, you, you, ugh, you, you, um, raised your son to be a bully, and basically, Mitsuki thinks, uh, I see why, so basically, Deku, he's, like, suspended for, like, I'm gonna say two weeks, and Inko is furious, saying, why, like, why, like, on the first day of public schooling, you got into a fight, and basically, Inko is strict about, you know, work. Because, like, I'm going to say that she's very much strict about that. And so, basically, Inko, she drives Deku out somewhere. And, yes, he's going to be abandoned. So, basically, um, I'm going to say that Inko drives Deku out somewhere. And I'm going to say it's the ocean. So, Inko knocks Deku out with, like, a crowbar. Because, I'm going to say that. I'm gonna say that um Deku, he was in his human form. So basically, Deku he gets knocked out, and Inko she like she grabs a brick and a chain, she ties the chains onto Deku, and like she basically just you know fucking, you know you, you know throws Deku inside the fucking ocean, and. And basically, Inko says, I'm sorry, you're not my son anymore. So Deku, he hears this. He's angry. He's furious. He's screaming. And basically, the Galvins, they, they detect Deku sinking down and down and down and down until he hits the fucking core. He hits the core of their, um, I'm going to say that he hits the core of Earth. The Galvins detect Deku. They they don't get a rescue party and, and they bring Deku to their world and and they shrink Deku down to their size. So Deku right now, mm -mm -mm -mm, not working. He's not working like he's very much depressed. So I'm gonna say the Galvins they basically treat Deku and they see the device and like they see it's very you know small. Cause like, um, I'm gonna say that Deku hasn't been, you know, going there. Because like, cause like online schooling, they see he's, you know, smart and shit. So basically, 
they basically, you know, shrink Deku down, they treat his wounds, they, and they see the watch. And the guy who created the watch, I'm gonna say he's dead, and, and he had kids. So he basically taught, you know, them on how to fix, you know, Deku's watch. And they fix Deku's watch. And I'm gonna say when, I'm gonna say this certain Galvin, Omegas, yes, Omegas, he basically, when he basically, you know, creates the watch, he creates something like a um, system to it. And Deku, like, when, and when Omegas puts the watch on Deku's arm, it basically covers his, you know, front, like, from his wrist all the way down to, like, you know, I'm gonna say to the point where <laughs> your, you know, arm bends right here. And, and basically, that has, like, a, um, I'm gonna say, it basically, you know, absorbs it into Deku's skin. To where, to where Deku, his arm is strong. It's basically, okay, think of Galactus from, um, I'm gonna say, I don't know where he's from, but, like, okay, think of Galactus. He's like that, but he's able to restart the universe as a different universe each time so de basically when omega gets you know finished with it and basically deku wakes up screaming because like he felt the pain of something going in his arm so he wakes up saying what the hell did you galvis do to me and basically omega just slaps him in his mouth saying what's your language there are kids here and dex is oh crap saying what like what did you do to me and basically, Deku, he basically wanted, like, who are you and where is, you know, Omni? And basically, Omega says, Omni is dead and I'm his son. It's a pleasure to me. I mean, I'm his daughter. And Deku, he pokes an eye, like, his daughter? And Deku says, and basically, Omega says, yeah, basically, yeah. So basically, Deku, you know, feels, you know, feels in, I mean, uh, he fools, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> he basically um, fills in, you know, Omega's on what his mom did. And basically, Deku, he says, it's all right. That means I don't have to live with her. So basically, the Galvins, basically, the Galvins, they basically, you know, um, I'm going to say that, one of the Galvins, who, I'm going to say, who's the Galvin who created, you know, the Omnitrix? I'm going to say that, I'm going to say that, um, because the Omnitrix, I'm going to say the Galvins, they, they went from different dimension and dimension and dimension, and they grabbed all the Omnitrix, Omnitrixes, and they just mashed them together into one Omnitrix. And it, and, and basically, they added on different types of DNA, like T-Rex um, DNA, you know, every type of DNA they found because of the dimension, Spicer. It all went inside the Omnitrix. And when, I'm going to say that o Omegas, he said that he did some t um, tinkering with it, and basically, it fits Deku's arm. And when Deku goes to grab it, it basically sucks. Like, I'm going to say that. It basically um, attaches to the metal um, thing that contains his power inside his arm. And Deku feels like a sharp pain. And a um, black light comes like comes out of it. And, and, and once Deku, he touches it one hit. And basically, I'm going to say that by instinct, he says, um, it's hero time. And out of nowhere. He becomes, I'm gonna say he's gonna like he um I'm gonna say way big. He becomes way big. When he becomes way big, uh, uh, you know what? Not way big. Scratch that. Hold on. And he becomes this. And hold on. And basically, once he gets done with that one, he turns into this one. And basically, it's fucking confusing on how 
on what he did. So please tell me if you like this or not, because like this is a you know, you know idea that I had. So please you know, see about this. Mad Max signing off.